Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for joining us here today on uh, day two of the annual meeting 2014, our 44th annual meeting, and a meeting with a the theme um, which is very much dominated by um, dialogue and action around increasing entrepreneurship and uh, tackling youth unemployment. Professor Klaus Schwab of the World Economic Forum indeed himself said that intergenerational crisis was the biggest challenge we face today. So on, in, on that note, I'm delighted here to be uh, with um, my esteemed colleagues who will be talking about and launching a scheme to encourage entrepreneurism in Europe. This is the launch of Startup Europe. Before I ask my colleagues to say a few words and, and, and explain the, uh, the scheme in, in more detail, I just introduce them. So in my, uh, my immediate left here is Jose Maria Alvarez Payete, Chief Operating Officer, Telefonica. Needs no introduction. Neely Cruz, Vice President, Commissioner for the Digital Agenda, European Commission in Brussels, and a co chair of the Governors for Information and Communication Technologies Industries 2013. And I'm joined on my far right by Natalie Boulanger, Senior Vice President, Orange Startup Ecosystem. And also Mr. Werner Hoyer uh, has also joined us. I'm very, very welcome. Uh, to you too, sir. I would just like to encourage, um, first of all, invite Ms. Cruz to say a few words and talk about the importance of this scheme and how you intend to uh, reinvigorate startup culture in Europe. It is a fascinating issue that we are sitting together, and I, I'm delighted that main players um, in the business world um, and in the banking sector are joining uh, and giving a little bit more <coughs> as uh, explicit information. Um, what is at stake? That we really need a startup mindset and um, that it is talking about um, a opportunity and a instrument for making a difference and talking about Europe, being responsible for um, uh, the European agenda, uh, giving an instrument for just changing it. Um, Europe needs thriving startups, no doubt about that. Politicians, uh, governments, commissions are not creating jobs. It is the business world, it is everyone who is active in the outside world, but we, of course, have a responsibility. Um, we uh, pretend not to be bureaucrats. Uh, anyhow, if you think we are bureaucrats, um, we don't create jobs, but we have to give comfort to a climate in which it is possible and in which it is giving a push. So the right policy support, so to say. And that means also removing obstacles. And we are aware that there are obstacles, still obstacles, so to say. So um, being aware of that, uh, we have to act. Mm. Um, I'm committed to support startup and investor communities to improve their own conditions where they can. And uh, that is how we came to be together. Uh, and together in this room doesn't mean that it's only for this press conference, but it is because the intention and uh, the goal is uh, combining us. We are on the same page. And what I'm mentioning, and I've mentioned it before, uh, and certainly after my recent visit to uh, Athens, uh, taking over the Greek presidency, was an event where the commission was attending, and I took the opportunity to um, just um, push um, and, and, and other activity and uh, giving a hand for that. The Dutch ambassador in Athens just cleaned up the fitness room in the embassy. Uh, it is, by the way, a huge fitness room. <laughs> it's a basement and so on. Get rid of all those. And he was mentioning to his people, do it at home or elsewhere. And he gave uh, just opportunities for startups. He organized mentors, researchers, bankers, and so on. And he just opened the door. And so far, there are 20 startups. There is a long waiting list. And I am absolutely certain that type of giving uh, opportunities and possibilities is at stake. So tech entrepreneurs in Europe, males and females, by the way, and that is extremely important. We can't afford to neglect 50% of uh, our um, population, so to say. What is at stake now? Um, uh, we uh, are starting um, early stage investors are getting organized, adding their own specific uh, manifestos, to give one example. 
but uh, those entrepreneurial demands is the need for a new mindset. And therefore, the new think tank we launched today is extremely important. And I'm very yeah, um, delighted, very much delighted, that <coughs> Telefonica, Orange, and the European Investment Bank are attending this press conference and will give you far more information. But thanks heaven, they are not the only ones. We have a long list, and uh, we can, in the meantime, prove for Telefonica was sitting here last year, and they filled in. And we badly need those examples to have that change of mindset. And it's not talking about a generation that starts 23 or whatever. It starts much earlier on. And that is fascinating in, for example, the campus party that is backed by and organized by Telefonica. But there are a couple of other um, uh, similar uh, events. There, the youngest are 13, 14 years old. And then we are talking. If that mindset is just coming up. So I'm delighted to listen to all the examples of Telefonica, of Orange, of uh, the European Investment Bank. It is just role models, and we badly need them. Thank you, Commissioner Chris. Jose Maria of Aris Palete from Telefonica, but perhaps you could talk about the commitment and, and the role of the Telefonica in a large corporate such as your own can play in, the, in, in this uh, agenda setting initiative. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Commissioner Cruz, once again, for having us here uh, jointly with, uh, with the Commission. Um, this is not something new. We were discussing that uh, with the Commission for a long while. And in fact, we have, um, we have been very active since then. Europe uh, needs uh, successful uh, stories of entrepreneurs because uh, innovation was flying away from Europe. Uh, if you wanted to be successful in a startup, in a very innovative project, it looks like Europe was not the place to be. And this is uh, starting to change. And I think that this is the kind of mindset that we need to have, that you can be very successful because Europe has always been uh, a place, very innovative place, and a place where the standards of technology, the standards of innovation have been created. So that's where our concern, that we wanted innovation to stay in Europe, to be very active in Europe, and therefore to be a crucial part of our strategy in Europe. Um, and we agree, politicians or, um, do not create jobs. This is not the role. The role is to create the framework and to create the, uh, the infrastructure and, the, and the, um, the policy to make sure that um, this framework, this, this, uh, this mindset can be uh, positive and can be expanded. And this has been the case for, for, a, for, a, for a little while. So therefore, we cannot blame of a lack of a, of a legal framework. It can always be improved but uh, we are on the right direction. That's why we joined last year uh, uh, the initiative of Commissioner Cruz. We committed, we, we, did, we did not just join, we committed as well to some uh, specific targets. We have overperformed those targets. And I think this is good for Europe, for what we are trying to do jointly, but on top of that for our own company, because those entrepreneurs getting close to this kind of innovation, getting closer to this kind of disruptive ideas, is helping us to change Telefonica, to do a better company, to change and to create what, uh, what is called efficiency, efficient uh, innovation, to change uh, the way we do things and to do it better, to do it in a much more uh, innovative and productive way, and therefore to, to be better as a company. We have um, created several programs. Those programs have a scale, and therefore we have track record, and we have a specific figures that we can share. You can visit physical spaces where we are creating innovation, where we are fostering startups, where we are fostering and partnering with young people that are creating their own business. So therefore, we are not talking about projects, we are talking about realities. We have filtered more than 23,000 projects in the last three years, and we have created more than 300 startups just in the last three years. We are also teaching code at schools through Think Big uh, uh, Schools. We are creating apprenticeships on the startups. Therefore, it can be done. We cannot blame it on the framework. We cannot blame it on the regulation. It can be done, and it's very, uh, it has a very positive impact on your business. In September, we supported uh, the Startup Manifesto uh, issued by uh, uh, the Commission uh, because uh, we think it's, it's the right time. Because now, on top of everything that we have uh, been telling so far, we have another problem in Europe, which is youth unemployment. And we need to find ways to solve that problem as well. And I deeply think that entrepreneurship, fostering entrepreneurship, is part of that uh, solution. Uh, therefore, uh, we are committed, we have delivered, we are committed to deliver even more. 
we are fully aligned, but we also think it's very positive for a company like us to, uh, to get close to this kind of mindset because it helps to build a better company as well. Thank you, so very welcome remarks. And of course, the, the, the forum um, as well is very active in fostering uh, entrepreneurship. It's one of our flagship schemes in Europe and we continue to enjoy working productively with all the stakeholders at this meeting to, to foster that. I'd just like to now ask Natalie Boulanger, Senior Vice President Orange Start Ecosystem to maybe tell a bit about how you're involved in, in driving entrepreneurship in, in, in Europe, in, in your organization. Yeah, but that's okay. European Union was first built through the melting pot of the coal and steel community, transforming tools of wars into resources for economic development. Today's coal and steel is the startup ecosystem. The digital economy is both driving economic growth and improving dramatically our daily lives, e-health, e-education, smart cities, smart home. In a nutshell, smart and sustainable civilization. That's why at Orange, we are very proud to be associated with those two initiatives, with the two bright programs, which reflect our approach to open innovation and our commitment to support startups scale up and become European leaders. Therefore, we also seek to contribute to economic growth in Europe, encourage job creation and help future talents. Open innovation is part of our DNA and we already launched several initiatives to support startup scale up and especially we created Orange Publicis Fund um, because startups need money and also we launched Orange Fab, our worldwide acceleration program dedicated to startups which already have um, a product or a, a service developed to help them reach their market and go international, while accelerate, accelerating innovation for our customers. Our startups, as startups all also first need customers and revenues. So it is a win-win program for both Orange and the startup ecosystem. And we also created, uh, in partnership with Girls in Tech, uh, a pan-European challenge to promote startups founded or co-founded by women. Uh, and of course, uh, we are willing to go further together, uh, thanks to SEP and DEF initiative uh, to uh, help startups to scale up. Thank you so much. And uh, last but not at all least, Mr. Werner Hoyer, President of the European Investment Bank. Thank you very much. Let me, is this on? Let me first of all thank uh, Commissioner Cruz for inviting me. When she calls, I'm there, as always. Uh, because we are cooperating very well between the Commission and the European Investment Bank Group uh, on uh, the digital agenda. Uh, normally, we're talking about big tickets on broadband uh, coverage uh, and things like that. Now we're talking about the complement to this, and this is SMEs. SMEs who are very innovative and which are absolutely needed. And when it comes to, to SMEs in Europe, we have one major problem that uh, we need to address uh, aggressively, and that is the lack of an equity culture in Europe, which makes it easier for SMEs to get started and get going and con to get continuing. So the uh, subsidiary of, of the bank, of the EU bank, the uh, European Investment Fund, is strongly concentrating on both these pillars, SMEs on the one hand and uh, innovative technologies on the other hand. So it is, goes without saying that we observe and uh, support this initiative very strongly. I think in, the, uh, in view of the fact that we have already an, an investment in 3,800 technology-oriented SMEs in the portfolio and that we are, will be able in the next years until 2020 to invest a, around a billion per year euros into uh, SMEs, there will be a high concentration towards uh, innovation-oriented uh, companies. Uh, by the way, um, when, it, when I say SMEs, I would like to, to complement what has been said about the t issue of youth unemployment. I think uh, the solution or the mitigation of the huge problem of youth unemployment uh, c must come from SMEs mainly, and therefore, in innovation-oriented support for SMEs via equity, on the one hand, 
um, and uh, strengthening of the um, mismatch uh, overcoming in the in the preparation of young people for jobs in innovation and technology technology oriented uh, spheres is essential so uh, on behalf of or upon the request of the European Council we are heavily investing in the field of uh, youth unemployment um, or fight against youth unemployment and these things go well, very well together because it is the most uh, and promising field in which you can invest if you invest in young people and in new technologies. Last word, Europe is in a deep crisis. and We are so stuck in the crisis that we are sometimes overlooking the fact that there is a life after the crisis. And for the life after the crisis, the global competition, we need to be better prepared. This is why I particularly welcome this initiative towards startups in the field of new technologies. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Would, would you mind if I add please, again, and I'm repeating do. myself, so um, the, the launching today of the think tank is combining all those activities of the banking world, the companies that are active in this field, but also the universities and the research institutes. And that combination is a type of a broad church, if you allow me to say it. So it helps translating the Startup Manifesto, and the Startup Manifesto was a product and is a product of startups, but in the meantime, very successful, eight startups uh, who were confronting uh, the Commission, who were confronting the Council um, with the leaders of the European Member States with, please, there is talent, and rightly said by Werner, Please come out of your comfort zone, and comfort in this case, not completely comfort, but come out of your way of thinking as you did. There are opportunities and people are waiting, the younger generation, but by the way, startup can also be an older one. Yes. Uh, thank you very much. And indeed, I'm, I'm, I'm reminded of a lot of the, uh, the, the, the talk before this meeting, which was indeed about moving away from the crisis mindset and actually taking some time and finding the intellectual space to, to start planning long term and thinking about moving forward. Before we hand over to questions, I'd just like to ask one um, of my own, if I may, maybe it's the, the old journalist in me. Um, we, we talk a lot about competitiveness at the World Economic Forum and we see in Europe a competitiveness divide. Could you perhaps talk about how you see startup culture helping narrow this divide and what role um, startups can, can have in, in, in creating a, a more unified level of competitiveness across Europe? They are, per definition, out of the box thinkers. They are not uh, accepting what we are uh, used to. So there it starts. They, in most cases, are in a situation where they are thinking of new economic models and where uh, in the way that uh, both, or that the three other members of the panel uh, are describing, are taking opportunities and backing them. So competitiveness is at stake, and I am absolutely certain that we have to just narrow the gap. Also talking about a global scene, we, and it's not anymore for sometimes people are saying, why not a Silicon Valley in Europe? And I'm always saying, come on, not copying Silicon Valley, we have a culture, we have our own uh, opportunity and our own business models and make with our values the best out of that. And then it seems to be that there is a two-way traffic. Youngsters, startups are coming up over from um, other parts of the globe. And I think you have an excellent example, Jose Marie, um, with uh, the founder of 20. Yeah. Yes, um, we are finding uh, uh, we, are, we are finding uh, specific examples of people that is coming from the U.S. and from other parts of the world. But in this case, it's an example of a, a, a person coming from uh, from California to find their startup in Europe. And uh, when we ask him why, why is he doing that? Well, he has another ecosystem, probably more favorable ecosystem down there. He said that he's finding in Europe things that he's not able to find elsewhere, which is namely a different culture a more environmental and more social oriented uh, culture. And on top of that, he finds that education is probably as good here that it is there. And th there is uh, uh, a brighter uh, perspective here because uh, competition is just starting here. So do we have some uh, pillars that we can build. We have the education, we have the framework, we have um, um, uh, 
uh, a tradition of innovation in Europe as well. And uh, we, are, we are starting from a, from a new stage. So I think that we have very positive things to, uh, to offer to people that would like to come to Europe to, uh, to create their own, uh, their own startups here. And I think that by doing that, we can shift a little bit uh, the, uh, the, the because it, it looks like everything has been globalized, but innovation that is supposed to happen in very specific places. Olivier, what we were discussing, it's not only the northern part of Europe or whatever part, it is all over Europe. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. A very good point. Thank you. I'll see if there are any questions. Sorry, there's a microphone coming. What, this is a, uh, you mentioned in the, in the pre-briefing, this is also about the Startup Europe partnership. What's, um, what's different about this partnership as, a, as opposed to other initiatives uh, in the European uh, Union and, and sponsored by the Commission? Um, how, how is this, besides the partners who are involved, how is this going to um, really seek to make a big difference in Europe in, in the culture and, and the opportunities for this ecosystem to improve? Thank you. I'm not saying that we are replacing other initiatives and we should learn from each other. And this one is really the answer on the uh, manifesto that was at the table. And the manifesto for me was a global um, uh, manifesto in a way for talking again about those founders, successful founders, the eight successful founders, four of them with US passports, but um, uh, acting in, in Europe, it, it was their uh, plea for uh, you have to change your climate in Europe if you are interested in attracting more startups. And then you need a body, and that is the broad chart, so to say, uh, the think tank, and that is also the answer to uh, the Council of uh, Presidents and Prime Ministers that we are aware that within a combination of universities, researchers, bankers, and the business world, we can give an answer. And if you are listening to Jose Marie, but also to the orange uh, examples, you are talking about numbers. And we need role models. We need to make it clear, close to ourselves, that sitting at home is no alternative. Only in uh, the app, uh, developing world. The last two years in Europe, 800,000 jobs are created, so or were created. So then you are talking, and not every startup uh, and initiative is a success. But then we are coming back to the failure too. We have to change our mindset, and we have to prove that you need to have failures too. For otherwise, you didn't do your utmost. Thank you very much. Well, time is marching on and uh, we all have busy agendas, so I'd like to thank my panel very much indeed for joining us and choosing uh, this platform to, to launch this new think tank. I'd like to thank my physical audience and also our audience watching us on live stream in the media centre here in Davos and also around the world. Many thanks indeed.